We are following breaking news. Seven Marines, four soldiers still missing after an Army chopper went down during a routine training mission in Florida. Happened right there near the Eglin Air Force Base. That's in the Panhandle, just east of Pensacola. Search and rescue crews found debris of that chopper around 2 o'clock this morning, about five hours ago. David Martin from CBS News looking into this, and as soon as there is more information, we're going to pass that along. So far, there's been no contact with crew members. We're going to update the situation just as soon as we can. Amy? Uh, Cuthbert Langley right now is at the Metro Dale this morning. He's telling us about an argument that really turned ugly, and it's one over a boyfriend and takes a serious and, well, dangerous turn in Bellevue. And now one woman in a lot of trouble this morning. Let's get the latest from Cuthbert right now. He's following these new developments from Metro Jail. So what led to this woman's arrest, Cuthbert? Hey, good morning, Amy. File this under not so smart. According to police, the suspect who's accused of attacking this woman actually posted about it on her Facebook page, if you can believe that. And turns out the victim herself was doing a little bit of detective work and discovered these posts so that in conjunction with those posts were able to lead police to arresting this woman a couple of months after this crime happened. Here's what we know. This all occurred on General George Patton Road back in January. Police say the victim was standing outside of her home when the 24 year old suspect Jennifer Megan Jackson approached her. I'm told Jackson allegedly hit the victim in the head and then stole her hoodie and her Samsung Galaxy tablet. Here's where it gets interesting. A few days later, authorities say the suspect actually reached out to the victim on Facebook, messaging her, accusing the victim of having an affair with the suspect's boyfriend. That Facebook rant continued when, if you can believe this, the suspect allegedly wrote step by step what she was planning to do to the victim. She said she was going to get her boyfriend to call the victim to set up a meeting. And obviously that boyfriend says the woman was her lover, but clearly it wasn't the boyfriend who came to the scene. It was the suspect who then, as I said, attacked her according to police. So now the suspect is in jail, uh, was in jail earlier. She was charged with robbery for all of this because again, she stole that hoodie and that tablet. She has since been released from jail, but will be in court on those charges a little bit later on this week. We're live here at the Metro Jail this morning. I'm Cuthbert Langley, News Channel 5 HD. All right, Cuthbert, thank you. A man is facing drug charges after the cops found his roommate dead in their home. Investigators say that William Hunter was making meth in the Humphreys County home where a man was found dead over the weekend. His name has not been given out. The death is being investigated, though, as a homicide. The man accused of killing a transgender person in a driveway of a vacant home surrendered to the cops yesterday. Mallory Porter charged with Criminal homicide. Police say that he killed Gilbert Fowler last November after arranging to meet him at that home off Lund Drive. Porter denies any involvement, however. It was a debate over the Second Amendment that turned nasty and physical, and now it's landed a Metro officer in jail. Former Metro Lieutenant Wayne Skinner surrendered last night on the arrest warrant that was against him, charging him with misdemeanor assault. Investigators say that he kicked a sergeant under his command Friday during a heated discussion over the Second Amendment. Skinner also resigned from the police department early yesterday. Funeral arrangements have been set now for Devante Ziegler. The 15-year-old was shot Friday by his 11-year-old friend who had brought a gun over to show him. Visitation will be held Friday at Revelation Funeral Home from 1 till 6. Devante's funeral taking place Saturday at noon at the Greater Revelation Missionary Baptist Church. Those are open to the public, by the way. There's a new recall to tell you about this morning. Parents, check the medicine cabinets. The FDA recalling certain infant and children's liquid medicines, including some very popular ones, Tylenol, Motrin, Zyrtec, and Benadryl. I think we have all of those in our medicine cabinet right now. Those medicines have a manufacturing deficiency, which could affect their quality or potency. Check the FDA's website. You'll have more information there. Hey, the tournament, the SEC tournament, is the hottest ticket in town and really all across the country. One ticket to just one game can cost you hundreds of dollars, especially if you're trying to see number one seed Kentucky. They've been number one all season long and are undefeated, by the way. UK fans are expected to turn out in force, and that's great news for Music City's bottom line. Having the SEC tournament here for the number of years we're going to have it over the next 10 years is just a huge win for the city. 
Um, and, you know, now we have the convention center open, the Omni Hotel open, uh, Lower Broadway is just, is just knocking it out of the park. So this should be a very good week for Nashville. Hey, game one is tonight at 6 o'clock, Mississippi State versus Auburn, followed by South Carolina versus Missouri.